Several people have been confirmed dead following the spread of a new strain of coronavirus, which was first identified in Wuhan, central China. Is the situation under control? And what can people do to protect themselves? And a recent report rated Hong Kong's police force as the sixth best in the world. But will the contamination stop? Welcome to The Point, an opinion show coming to you live from Beijing. I'm Li Xin. Several people have died from pneumonia caused by a new strain of a coronavirus initially found in central China's Hunan city. That's according to China's National Health Commission and the number is expected to rise. Chinese authorities have now confirmed over 290 cases including on the mainland and in Taiwan. A total, a total of four cases have been confirmed in Japan, Thailand and the Republic of Korea. So how has China responded to the outbreak so far? How how serious is the situation and how much should people worry? Joining me from Hong Kong is Professor Gabriel Leung, Chair Professor and Dean of Public Health Medicine at the University of Hong Kong and Founding Director of the WHO Collaborating Center for Infectious Disease Epidemiology and Control. From Washington, D.C., Dr. Eric Ding, an epidemi epidemiologist and health econ economist at the Harvard Chen School of Public Health and joining us via Skype from Shenzhen, Southern China, Dr. Hua Chen Zhu, Associate Professor at State Key Laboratory of Emerging Infectious Diseases at the University of Hong Kong. Welcome to all of you to The Point. I would like to go to Professor Leong first um, and talk about China's response so far. The World Health Organization has praised China's response to the outbreak. Dr. Gaudan Galea, the WHO's representative to China, said in the statement that uh, preliminary identification of a novel virus in a short period of time is a notable achievement and demonstrates China's increased capacity to manage new outbreaks. So Professor Leong, you were closely involved in fighting SARS, which um, um, was a very severe situation in 2003. Now from your point of observation, how would you rate mainland Chinese authorities' response so far? Thank you for having me, Xin. It's uh, certainly a remarkable sense of deja vu uh, since SARS 17 years ago. I think the uh, Chinese government has been appropriate, decisive, and have shown a remarkable willingness to listen and to adjust uh, strategies and tactics of infection control according to very rapidly changing conditions on the ground. And Having worked through SARS on the scientific response side, um, I must really say that it's a vast improvement uh, from 17 years ago. The science has moved on, and the willingness and openness and sense of transparency have been absolutely remarkable this time around, especially uh, willing to uh, call on national as well as international experts uh, to help inform on the best strategies against this particular new virus, mm. uh, the coronavirus in the Wuhan outbreak. All right. Dr. Chu, let me go to you. I know you are busy in Shenzhen. Actually, you were visiting a hospital in that city uh, precisely for the, because of the situation surrounding this latest outbreak. Um, from your observation, after the SARS outbreak and other experiences, what do you think has changed to give the Chinese public more confidence in the system? Thank you for inviting me for this discussion. And currently, we are conducting some in investigation in mainland China. So I would say that after the SARS outbreak, the most observable uh, change is, uh, is the um, surveillance system and also the changes in the uh, reporting system of diseases. So we can see that actually the transparency, uh, the legis legislation, and also uh, the capacity, facility, and also uh, the technology in mainland China has already uh, improved dramatically. So uh, nowadays, uh, it is mandatory to report the uh, infectious, uh, especially those severe infectious diseases. And also, um, it was uh, mandatory to uh, report this both to WHO, to the international, and uh, also uh, to, to China, to the public. Uh, 
-hmm. And I think that uh, the by safety uh, level, uh, including the by safety level three, level four facilities, has already been available and also been set up in China, in mainland China mm -hmm. now. So we are not that scared of the uh, diseases. We can handle the very uh, notorious viruses in these facilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, the detection and diagnostic uh, capacity has al already been improved. Right. Well, at this and moment. The pop uh, yeah. yeah. Um, yes. At this moment, the source of the coronavirus infection has not yet been confirmed, although experts are working very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, but experts of a working team under China's public health authority have said that the virus's um, gene genetic mutation is very fast. But experts under the National Health Commission also say they believe a severe epidemic is still preventable and controllable in their original words. So let me go to Dr. Ding and maybe later to the other two guests. Uh, Dr. Ding, how, what is your assessment of the situation? Do you also see this as a situation that is still preventable and controllable, or for the moment it is, but the situation could be shifting in the near future? Yeah, thanks for having me. This question of preventable and controllable is very tricky because we don't know how exactly fast it attacks, how infectious it is from person to person because this is cold flu pneumonia season in the winter. And this, this virus mimics many uh, traditional cold symptoms and flu symptoms. So when we actually try to calculate that, it'll take a while. But in terms of controllability, it all depends. How draconian do you want it? It's, it's uh, lunar festivals, travel season. Are we going to ban travel from everyone from Wuhan? And now it's also shifting to Shanghai um, and other countries. Do we ban air travel? And w do we assess every single train uh, uh, as well as air passenger as well? The controllability is how harsh the government wants to crack down and test everyone. But right now, in a city like Wuhan, maybe you can contain it. But in a city like Shanghai, it will be much more difficult. Okay. And that is what we're trying to learn. And that's why the WHO is trying to uh, uh, convene an emergency meeting uh, tomorrow to uh, discuss this along mm. with Chinese leaders. Professor Leung, what is your assessment of the situation as to the preventability and controllability of the situation? Are we being too optimistic at this moment or given the confidence uh, in the system or the improvement in the system and the increased capacity, um, maybe China has enough confidence that even if the situation continues to deteriorate from now on, it is still within the scope of, uh, of uh, the uh, response capacity of the system? I think that the, the question is a very difficult one. We don't have enough information to really be able to tell what is the extent of the human-to-human -human spread, what is the possibility or the plausibility of a super-spreading event, which really is very characteristic of coronaviruses outbreaks like SARS and like MERS, um, and really uh, where is the animal source? And if we can identify all three of these, then we would have a much better idea how much we can contain this outbreak within the single epicenter of Wuhan uh, and or how much uh, this may spread further domestically uh, and or internationally. In terms of human-to-human -human transmission, uh, it is the focal point of a lot of people's attention, and I want to have your uh, assessment on that. Uh, Dr. Zhu, for instance, uh, we know, and a very respected Chinese academician has said that this virus is communicable from human to human. So in layman's term, how concerned should people be about this possibility, especially during this upcoming massive uh, spring festival travel season? Okay, so we know that I actually during this busy... Go ahead, uh, Dr. Zhu, please. Yeah, okay, so I think bu uh, during this busy traveling season, actually uh, tens of millions of people uh, will travel across uh, the different uh, provinces. So it will create a chance that virus uh, uh, can be transmitted in a very rapid way. Uh, way and also transmitted uh, uh, across uh, uh, very far 
uh, distance. So I think that uh, it is our duty to uh, conduct a close surveillance uh, monitoring uh, whether uh, anybody potentially carrying the virus that may uh, be uh, uh, observed uh, uh, using our surveillance system. Hmm. And also it is uh, critical to remind people if you have any symptoms, please don't travel and try to uh, isolate or quarantine yourself in a safe place so that we can reduce the risk, uh, risk for the virus transmission. Dr. Leung, you wanted to say something just now? Uh, Professor Leung. I think, I, I, I think Maria is absolutely correct. I think the uh, Chunyun, the Spring Festival related travel is uh, something that we have to be extremely careful about. Um, so this is where uh, one of our models uh, that we have just completed uh, sort of looks at how much of this spring festival related travel might contribute to further domestic spread. Now clearly uh, we are now getting reports from different parts of the country where there are suspected or even confirmed cases exported from Wuhan. So I think the most important thing to do is really to keep good personal hygiene and don't travel if you are sick. Uh, and make sure that you go and seek medical attention as soon as you think that you may have symptoms, especially if you have exposure history uh, to Wuhan and in particular the, those wet markets. Right. At this moment, I understand that there are a lot of measures, extra measures that have been uh, undertaken by the city of Wuhan. For instance, uh, the government is strengthening control over the people entering and leaving the city. Uh, there are police who are conducting spot checks on private vehicles entering, leaving Wuhan to check whether they're bringing live birds or wild animals with them because these are uh, supposedly where the virus came from. And then tourism agencies in Wuhan will not be conducting trips outside the city in Red uh, thermometers are deployed at airports. Just now we were seeing vim images of exactly how these thermometers are functioning so that they can scan large numbers of people at a very high speed, sometimes just one second, so they can know who, is, who have a fever, who don't. And uh, there are other, other measures as well. For instance, passengers who do have a fever will be registered and guided to doctors. So, um, Dr. Ding, again, what kind of challenge is China looking at at this moment? And uh, um, how do you think the China Chinese will be uh, coping with the situation and from the kind of measures, the promptness that they have uh, de demonstrated in coping with the situation. Mm. Do you think um, there is yeah. a certain degree of uh, confidence in the, their ability to have the situation under control? From all I have seen and heard, Wuhan is definitely on a lockdown in terms of a surveillance and you know travel and uh, monitoring everyone with fever but the, I think the bigger worry is that it's spread beyond Wuhan and it seems to be a very fast spreading virus um, and once it enters a new city that's not locked down like Wuhan is like other countries as well as cities like Shanghai which is much 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 larger and difficult to police with many more international travel travelers it th this pr this problem may we have to see over the next week or two have we mostly contained it or has it leaked out of Wuhan and is now uh, going to reach a multi-focal point epidemic. That is what we'll have to see and this virus is a fast mutating virus it seems mm. ac according to many and coronavirus again viruses because they travel between animals and people it's, it's almost impo impossible to completely lock down. The issue is how willing are the government leaders and WHO to monitor aggressively and lock down the virus in other cities once it pops up in other locations? Mm. And that is one of those issues in which public health leaders have to decide with government. Well, I understand that Chinese President Xi Jinping has come out and said on Monday that uh, the outbreak must be taken seriously and that every possible measure should be taken to contain it. Uh, here in Beijing, I already see a lot of people wearing facial masks and uh, um, all kinds of measures, all kinds of precautionary messages are spreading so that people uh, know what's going on and uh, information is also being shared promptly with uh, highly respected academicians coming out and talking to the press almost on a daily basis about what is happening. So Professor Leong, um, how do you look at the prospect of the situation? Are we potentially looking at a much wider spread of the virus or uh, will the situation be pretty much manageable and 
given what we have gone through vis-à-vis uh, -vis the SARS situation? I think that we've learned a lot from SARS, uh, but I think that we should really remain calm, don't panic, because I'm anticipating that the case reports are going to keep climbing. So those numbers of confirmed cases will keep on climbing for a little while more yet because there's always a lag between symptom onset, that is the time when you show symptoms after having been infected, and through the diagnostic process finally being confirmed and then reported in, uh, to the public. And so you are going to see those numbers go up, uh, but the big question is what is going to be the underlying infectious disease dynamics? That is, is the basic reproductive number, that is the average number of secondary cases that an infected individual is going to uh, pass it on to, is that number going to be greater or less than one? If it's greater than one, the epidemic will continue growing. Mm. If it's less than one, then the epidemic will eventually die away and fade out. So I think this is something that epidemiologists in the global community, right. and in collaboration with national leaders, are going to be watching very closely. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ju, um, from an, an ordinary person's perspective, anybody watching this, possibly in Japan, in ROK, Thailand, or other places where there are very you know, close ge geographical distance or close interaction with China, what should people do at this moment? Is there anything they can do to help themselves to become uh, less, uh, you know, inclined to be infected by any of this virus? Okay, so I should say that uh, so far we know that this novel coronavirus it is uh, transmitted uh, most possibly through the airborne uh, uh, route. So we need to uh, protect ourselves either by uh, using the uh, face mask and also we need to keep uh, ourselves uh, protected by like washing our hands uh, frequently and also avoid uh, attending like big meetings or gathering in the very crowded uh, uh, situation and if it is uh, not uh, necessary avoid traveling to like Wuhan or uh, reduce the frequency to visit uh, uh, like uh, clinical uh, settings and also visiting uh, uh, person or patients with the uh, uh, symptoms of uh, like respiratory infections. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think uh, there are some common methodology, me uh, common approaches uh, for us to avoid exposing ourselves to the risk. Okay. Well, um, Professor Leong, very briefly, anything else you want to add on top of the tips that uh, Dr. Ju has given? Three pieces of advice. One, don't panic, keep calm and stay rational. Two, keep good personal hygiene and cough and sneeze etiquette. Number three, avoid crowds, although it's very difficult to do over the Spring Festival, but be very, very careful uh, what kind of exposure you get and report your symptoms to doctors if you feel at all unwell. Oh. Okay, we have to leave it there. Thank you so, so much, Professor Gabriel Leung from the University of Hong Kong, from Washington, D.C., Dr. Eric Ding, and uh, from Shenzhen, also Dr. Hua Chen Zhu, also from the University of Hong Kong.